fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that happy people have to say. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma, star with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man, and what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen, here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish, and in the morning, enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smack and taste tickling, rib sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma, star with the New York His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! Hooray! Harry Holmes, a young cowhand, sat in his cell in the jail at Bolino City, Kansas. His head was bowed and resting on his hands. He had less than a day left to live. For it was early evening, and he was scheduled to die at dawn. He could hear carpenters outside completing work on the gallows. And then he heard the sheriff speak his name. Harry. Huh? Oh, good evening, Sheriff Gale. Sorry you've had to listen to that hammering all day. Sheriff, I still can't believe I'm having a daybreak. I'm innocent. I didn't kill Mark Mason. You admitted making threats against Mason, and you admitted being with him when he was shot. Oh, yeah, he but... was shot twice. And your gun had two empty shells in it when you were captured. I explained that, Sheriff. Mason was a miser and a skin and he owed me money. I was at his place trying to collect when some masked men showed up. I know. You claimed there was a holdup. You shot twice at the Owl Hoots before you made a getaway on your horse. That's the truth. Mason was robbed, wasn't he? Everyone knew he hoarded money, but none of it could be found in this house or on me. I Harry, didn't... I didn't aim to rehash that crime. I have some news for you. News? <laughs> your lawyer, Simon Fenton, claims to have found evidence to prove you're innocent. What? I told you I was innocent. Well, I've got to be shown. At any rate, Fenton got busy on the telegraph. He sent word to the governor, to Judge Harvey, who presided at your trial, and to me. Judge Harvey will be here when Fenton arrives. He'll look over the evidence, and he'll have authority from the governor to act as he sees fit. Uh, What is the evidence? I don't know. I've told you all I know about the situation. Sheriff, what if something happens to keep Simon Fenton from getting here before... before sunrise? Harry, there's nothing I can do. You mean... I mean... Unless Judge Harvey rules otherwise after seeing what your lawyer has to offer, I'm under orders to carry out the execution as scheduled. At that moment in the early evening, with the sun low on the horizon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had been riding cross-country to meet the Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, 
turn their horses onto the stage trail between Greenville and Bolino City. Right in, Toto. Who's the scout? Oh, fella. He's a big fella. We've ridden through a lot of thorny brushwood, Toto. I want to see if Silver has any scratches. Ah, uh, me take a look at Scout. Silver has one scratch, quite deep. Out, not hurt. I have some antiseptic in this saddlebag. Sorry, Silver, that we had to cross such rough country. He must have it. Listen, sound like two horses. Yes, coming from the south. Ah, when riders reach hilltop, then see us, see masks. Maybe ask plenty questions. We'll have to meet them, Toto. There's no place to hide. Ready now, Silver, this may hurt a little fellow. Tonto, holding Silver's bridle, saw two men appear on the crest of the hill a short distance away. One of the horsemen wore a stovepipe hat and a frock coat. The other had a star pinned to his vest and a heavy coat holstered on his thigh. Come and come and come, Sally. As the Lone Ranger finished applying the antiseptic to Silver's leg, the two riders brought their horses to a sudden halt. Oh, 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 for all I know, you might be Luke himself. Simon, dismount and take their guns. Take that man's mask, too. Uh, but, Marshal, I'm not armed. As the frock coated I man hesitated, Silver, realizing that the Marshal's gun know. meant danger, lunged forward. <laughs> Silver bumped the lawman's horse, throwing the Marshal off balance. As his gun wavered, the little ranger leaped the boat and gripped his gun arm. Let go of my arm! Not while you hold that gun. Simon, give me a hand! You stay back! Oh, don't shoot! Don't shoot me, Indian! Drop that gun, Marshal! Why, you want me? The Marshal fired accidentally. The bullet went harmlessly into the air. But the sound of the explosion, coupled with the confusion, panicked Simon Fenton's horse. The horse reared high, then bolted north. He got Marshal's gun. Good. Remove the cartridges, Toto. Ah, uh, me do it. Hey, you murder an owl hoot. Stay on your horse, Marshal. We'll return your I'm gun one. One of the nearest ranch and swearing men is a posse. I'll make you pay for this. Come on, get it. In a violent effort, the Marshal turned his horse. Just a minute. You'll have to shoot me in the back to stop me. Get up. Marshal, wait. Get up. Oh, here you go. Uh, no use, Toto. The Lone Ranger watched the Marshal ride south until he was out of sight beyond the hill. Then the masked man looked in the opposite direction. The other man's out of sight. I hope he brought the runaway horse under control. Him lose top hat. It's here on the ground. Oh, yes. Let me get it. Those men thought we were members of the Luke Barrels gang. I wonder why. Uh, me not know. Here, top hat. Ah, got papers inside. That man looked like a lawyer. Lawyers often carry papers inside their stovepipe hats. It's a good way to carry documents without folding them. Ah, uh. Here, paper. Thanks, Tom. The papers included copies of telegrams, newspaper clippings, signed documents, and several pages written by a lawyer. After studying them carefully, the masked man said, Toto, lawyer Simon Fenton was taking these documents to Bolino City. A man's life depends on them. Uh-huh. Whose life? A man named Harry Holmes. At daybreak tomorrow, he'll hang for murder unless there's legal action. Me hear of him. Him kill feller named Mason. No, he didn't kill Mason. Among these papers, there's a deathbed confession made by Cleve Collins, a member of Luke Barrow's gang. Collins was fatally wounded at a cafe brawl in Greenville. Him confess murder? He admitted taking part in it. He named Luke Barrow as the actual killer and implicated two other men. But that's not all. Here's a note to Collins. It's signed by Luke Barrow. It asks Collins to join in the Mason job. Now, me savvy why Marshall think we Barrow's men. Yes. If Barrow's knows of these documents, he'll surely try to get hold of them. Uh. What we do? We'll try to overtake the lawyer. Easy, Sally. It's a lot easy, fella. Come Meanwhile, Luke Burrows and the two remaining members of his gang, Lon Polk and Sam Shelton, waited in ambush among the shrubs and rocks that lined the trail on Signal Hill, several miles farther north. Looking over the top of a boulder, Luke Burrows said, Someone's coming. Simon Sutton? Yeah. All right, let's go. Bring it! Stop or we shoot! Whoa! Whoa, whoa! Don't shoot! Get off your horse! Whoa, now, I'm getting down! <laughs> Don't kill me! Keep your hands high. Search them, boys. Uh, yeah. You're welcome to everything I have if you'll just spare my life and let me go. Hey, here's a watch and some cash. Leave it. 
I've nothing else worth stealing. Uh, looks like he's telling the truth. I am. I've already met two crooks. You have? Yes, I'm sure the crooks were after some papers I had in my hat. They stopped the marshal and me a few what? miles south of here. Was the marshal with you? Yes. I don't know what happened to him. My horse bolted. I escaped. But I lost my hat and the important papers. Nothing in his saddlebags. Who were the crooks that stopped you? I don't know. But I'm sure they were members of the Bowers gang. When I got my horse under control, I kept going. I didn't dare return to meet those crooks. I must get on to Bolino City. Without those papers? Yes, yes. Perhaps if I tell what happened, how I lost them, I can get a stay at execution. Tell us more about the crooks who stopped you. Uh, one was tall, strong-looking, and wore a mask. His partner's an Indian named Tonto. Tonto? Did the masked man ride a white horse? Yes. Was Tonto riding a paint? That's right. Oh, that clinches it, boss. The Lone Ranger. Uh, the Lone Ranger? I've heard of him. He's no crook. We had trouble with him once before. He couldn't have intended to rob me. Wait. You men were after those papers. You must be... Look, Barrow. That's right, Fenton. Oh, no, no. Now, what do we do, boss? The Lone Ranger is sure to see those papers. You know how important they are. No doubt of that. Chances are he'll try to return them to this lawyer. That means he'll ride this way to overtake Fenton. Come on, Fenton. But why? I need your help in getting the Lone Ranger. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Unaccustomed to facing guns in the hands of killers, Simon Fenton trembled and was fearful as he sat on the ground behind the big boulder near the stage trail. While Lunn watched over the top of the boulder, Luke Barrows said, I'm going to give you a chance to save your neck, Fenton. Uh, why? You do as I say or we'll gun you. What do you want me to do? When the Lone Ranger and Tonto come into view, you step out onto the road. Hold up your hand. They'll see you and stop. That'll give us a chance to get an easy shot at him. You're going to kill the Lone Ranger and Tonto. That's right. We got a lot of grudges to square with them. Hey, they're coming. Good. I don't want to help kill. Would you rather have a bullet between the eyes? No, no, no. Don't shoot. You help us. And we'll give you your horse and let you go. Uh, how do I know you'll keep your word? You don't. But your only chance is to trust me. Now, go on. Get out there. Stand in the middle of the road and raise your hand in a signal to halt. Get going. I'm going. I'm... Looking cautiously from their ambush, the three crooks watched the lawyer walk slowly toward the oncoming Lone Ranger and Tonto. Then suddenly, Fenton started to run and shouted, Move back! Look out! Get that double crosser! Oh, I'll oh, get him for that! Oh! 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 Soon after the first exchange of gunfire, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were concealed as well as were the outlaws by the rocks and brush bordering the stage trail. Then Luke Burrows said, Those men can stay out of our sight across the road and make their way to the top of the hill. From there, they can fire down at us. What do we do? Get out while there's a chance. These boulders are big enough to cover us while we ride away. What about those papers we got to get? We'll get them. We get clear of here, we'll set a trap for the masked man at the Rapido River. Come on, let's go. Boulders 
cut off the sight of the outlaws, but the Lone Ranger and Tonto heard them riding away, and later saw them in the distance when they were out of gunshot. We chase them, Kimasabi? Not now, Tonto. First, we must see if we can help Fenton. It was twilight when the wounded lawyer, who had been placed on a blanket at the side of the road, opened his eyes. Oh, oh you're the Lone Ranger. Those crooks, Barrows and his pals, meant to kill you. You saved our lives, Fenton. They shot me. Yes. You're not seriously wounded. You were struck in the shoulder where you dressed your wound. Well, I, I don't count. There's a man, Harry Holmes, in Bolino City. Yes, we know about him. We read your documents. Those documents must reach the sheriff. I must deliver them. I'll deliver the documents. You... I'll we'll remain here with you until the marshal arrives. Oh, here's the marshal's gun. I'll leave it with you. But, but my hat... Hey, here's your hat. I have the documents in the saddlebag. Kimasabe, yes. look south. Men come this way, and Peller and Lead look like Marshal. Yes, he is the Marshal. No need me stay here now. Me ride with you. Good. You'll be all right, Fenton. The Marshal's sure to see you here. Yeah, I'll tell him you're the Lone Ranger. Thanks. Go on, Toto. Uh-huh. Hurry, Lone Ranger. A man's life depends on you. Easy, steady, big fellow. Easy, fellow. Come on, come on. Night closed in and the moon rose. The Lone Ranger and Toto maintained a steady pace. Come on, Come on, big fellow. Get him up, big fellow. Meanwhile, Luke Barrow and his partners had reached a point on the stage route where a covered bridge spanned the Rapido River. With their horses hidden on the north bank of the river, they waited in the darkness some 20 feet inside the bridge. Luke. You sure that masked man will have to cross this bridge to reach Bolino City? Sure, he's got to cross the river. And this is the only bridge. He'll be along. I'm just hoping the engine will be with him so we can gun them both. We can't miss him this time. Right. We'll see him as soon as they ride around the bend at Castle Rock. The moonlight will be full on them as they approach the bridge. Scout and Silver maintained their fast pace along the moonlit stage trail. Presently, the masked man said, Oh, there's Castle Rock. Uh-huh. You see it? That's where the road turns. The bridge is only about 50 yards beyond the turn. I'm sure we'll make Bolino City in time. That's good. Come on, Silver. Let's count. As the two horses approached the towering rock, Silver unaccountably sensed the nearness of peril. He may have caught the scent of the outlaw's horses, but whatever it was reminded him of the ambush that had nearly killed his master a few hours earlier. He halted abruptly. Oh, Silver. Why you stop here, Kimasabi? Silver stopped of his own accord. What matter? Oh, I, I don't know, Toto. What is it, big fellow? He act like danger near. Yes. He look at ground. Maybe those outlaws are nearby. He's just said, big fellow. Let's leave the horses here and see what's around the bend. Two men advanced on foot to the big boulder known as Castle Rock. They looked cautiously around it and saw the covered bridge about 50 yards away. Toto, that bridge would make a good place for an ambush. Ah, uh, easy for men to hide inside. I wonder if Barrows and his pals are there. I'm going to fire and see what happens. Hey, what the... There they are! Shoot! Hi! Gun flashes inside bridge. Yes, we met the enemy again. And what we do now? Keep them busy. You not see them. It's hard to get them. Stay here, Toto. Keep firing, but don't expose yourself. And what you do? I'm going to swim across the river and get behind those crooks. Quickly, the Lone Ranger removed his hat, boots, and gun belt and tied them to his saddle. He wrapped one gun in waterproof material. Then, while Tonto's gunfire held the outlaw's attention, he made his way unseen to a point on the riverbank downstream from the bridge. There, he plunged into the water. All right. Inside the tunnel, the crooks lay flat on their stomachs changing their positions each time they fired at Toto's gun flashes. Oh, this is a standoff. Keep firing. A lucky shot might get him. I wonder how those zombies knew we were here. I don't know. We don't even know if they're the Lone Ranger and Tano. No, but we're sure of one thing. No one's gonna cross this bridge. 
Unnoticed by the outlaws, the Lone Ranger entered the north end of the tunnel-like bridge and moved ahead as silently as a shadow. He saw the flashes of the crook's guns, and as his eyes became accustomed to the darkness, made out the forms of the three men. He aimed carefully at the gun of one of the men and fired. No! Hey, well, Drop your gun! Hey! How in tarnation! I'll kill you! No! My arms! Don't shoot me! One more gun, please! No, no, no! My hands hurt! My arms! Get on your feet and walk ahead of me. All right. Come on, fellow. Bring the horses. The fight's over. Harry Holmes spent the night praying and hoping for the miracle that would save him from unjust death at sunrise. Through the small high window of his cell, he saw the sky grow lighter. Stars disappeared as dawn crept over the horizon. Morning, Harry. Uh, oh, hello, Sheriff. Did my lawyer arrive? No. Oh. Hey, there's still a little time. Come on out, Harry. We'll go across the street to my office. Judge Harvey wants to talk to you. Judge Harvey. He wants to apologize for the miscarriage of justice what? before he sets you free. Sets me free? Yep. But you said Fenton didn't arrive. No, but his papers arrived just a little while ago. And the men who brought him brought Luke Barrows and his two pals. They're the ones who really killed Mark Mason. I, I can't believe it. It's the truth. They'll hang for a dozen crimes. And here's the outside door. Come on, son. Hey, Sheriff, who brought the papers to free me? You see that man over there standing beside the white horse? Yeah? He brought them. He and the engine who's with him. But, Sheriff, that man's wearing a mask. That's right. Well, whoever he is, Sheriff, he, he's the answer to my prayers. You know, Harry, you're not the first to say that about the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.